I tell you what, it's another day of, um, you know, like competing quarterbacks, um, a quarterback controversy that doesn't even exist. And we go to Twitter, and here come all of the numbers, how guys perform today. For those of you who, you know, have lives and you work and you don't know what happened at 49er practice today, Brock Purdy was very good, a couple of touchdown throws, very, very consistent over the middle. Um, Trey Lance was solid with his numbers, but those, and again, I do, do not kill the messenger. I'm passing along what all the reporters said. He had two incomp- incompletions, and, and both of them were short passes that were passes he should have been able to make. Sam Darnold probably had his worst day. Again, collectively, according to the people there, Brandon Allen, look out for that Brandon Allen. He's plucky, Dibs. And he did not throw any incompletions today at all. Five for five. Those of you who are into reps, Purdy, all the first team reps. I think Lance had nine uh, or 12 reps, Darnold 11, Brandon Allen 9. Okay, with that all out of the way, once those numbers are reported, and apparently like what order you write them in, what tone your voice is using when you pass them along. I didn't like your tone one bit. <laughs> what parenthetical info you add in to those numbers? You mentioned incompletes only with Trey Lance. You're right. And they all had some. Except for no. Except BA. Not Brandon Allen. Mr. Perfect. That interesting QB4 that the Niners have. Getting a lot more reps than any other QB4 in the world, Mark. In the world. Depending on all of those things, that determines the level of hate you have. You hate Trey Lance. For that's, Trey Lance. I mean, that, that's, that's, no. the, that's what I hear you saying. But th- th- this isn't personal. I know. It's not a joke either. I should no, knock that off. It's a, like it, it, is, it is everywhere. You hear it all the time. I hear it all the time. The way Trey Lance is covered is not fair. The slander. Okay, those of you who think that's true, why do you think that? What is it that you see? I will firmly state to you right now, I have been to multiple camp events. Um, I think I have a decent finger on the pulse of like the Bay area media at large. I, a lot of these people are our friends. We talk to them. I have never met a human being who even dislikes Trey Lance. I have not met anyone who has anything against Trey Lance, nothing, not one, no one, zero period zip. None. Nobody hates Trey Lance. Nobody dislikes Trey Lance. Nobody's been unfair to Trey Lance. Nobody has said anything against Trey Lance. Now, I do hear a lot of people report certain facts, such as he has struggled with his accuracy over this three-year period. This is not about yesterday in camp. Tomorrow in camp, today in camp, it's not about spotlighting small sample size Steve. Through his time here, he has struggled with accuracy, and reporters have gotten sourced information from inside the 49er organization that there's a hesitation sensation there. Where is this hate? Thank you. Where is this hate? I, I, and I mean this as genuinely as any, this is not a rhetorical question. What is it that y'all see that has made your mind up that somebody has something against an axe to grind against Trey Lance? And who would have the axe to grind? Is it the media? Is it the media covering the 49ers and Trey Lance? Is it the coach and the coaching staff who are either coaching up or not coaching up Trey Lance? Is it sports talk radio? Is it the Twitter sphere? Who are these people and... Do they matter? Because to me, the only people that matter are Kyle Shanahan and his staff, John Lynch and his group. End of list. It doesn't matter if Michael Silva reports something or Matt Mayoko or friend of the station, Matt Barrows or Cam Inman, who we love, or anybody else. Whatever they report on is based on a combination of conversations and observations. These are people who are out there 
every single day. Michael Silver is there every single day, and he has an avenue to talk to Kyle Shanahan, both in the press conference and on the side, and get information through conversations. It's funny, he tweeted out a picture of his, I think, 1982 Niners press credential. Michael Silver's been at it for darn near 40 years, covering the 49ers. So I think that he's got connections that most of us, you and I included, don't have. And I don't sense in any of the reportage anybody with an axe to grind. The one thing that you can criticize this Bay Area media group as is too nice and too soft. If you want to go that route, I don't think that that is leading to this notion that people are being too hard on Trey Lance. Because this this media group, by and large, and you and I know just about every single one of them, they're a nice group of people. And they don't often, thank you, they often, I don't recall anybody going out there with an axe to grind no. or taking somebody down. It's a pretty nice group of people. So I'm with you in terms of where is this this hate coming from? Because I don't think that Kyle Shanahan hates any of these quarterbacks. I think Kyle Shanahan wants to pick the best quarterback two, quarterback three, and then he'll find a QB four if he can't keep all four of these guys with one of them being on the practice squad. I don't sense that Kyle Shanahan is out to get anybody. He wants to win football games. Yes, I sense that he wants to do his job. Right. That's what I sense. I sense that he wants to win the Super Bowl. If you think that something has been done to Trey Lance unfairly, what exactly is it that you think was done? He hasn't been given a chance. That's the number. If we were playing Family Feud, that would be the number one answer on the board. Do, Do you believe that? No, I don't believe that, Mark. Okay. They gave him the starting job last year, mm-hmm. even though they may or may not have been completely convinced that he was ready to be the starter. And you could look at the play calls, and I'm not going to get into how he got hurt or why he got hurt, but I will look at the plays that were called for him. They indicated to me that Kyle Shanahan was not ready to give him the entire playbook. Now, is that because Trey can't handle it or Trey wasn't ready? Or Kyle didn't coach him up right. Maybe it's a combination of all those things. I'm most fascinated by the what if, if Trey Lance didn't get hurt. Mm-hmm. What would have happened when Jimmy Garoppolo was truly up to speed? Would Kyle have stuck with Trey Lance? Would he have ridden Trey Lance all the way to the end of days? I mean, we had the reports already before the year even started that there were whispers in the locker room about which quarterback should be starting. Right. That was our, and again, that was also Mike Silver, mm-hmm. also accused of hating Trey Lance when what he was doing was talking to people. Yeah. He's talking to people. He's talking to the actual people. It's journalism. Who make the news. So, and people giving him off the record statements. So as to protect the sanctity of the locker room. Yes, you know what I mean. So the thing that got everybody going today uh, was again silver, and uh, you damn know, it, Mike. Well, you know, we 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 reached out. Mike's Mike had a full day, and so he couldn't uh, he couldn't hop on. But I'll spotlight a couple things that he wrote in the Chronicle that got everybody going today. Uh, he writes about the potential of trading Trey Lance. He says his current value is something the Niners front office surely would find depressing. As I reported last week, San Francisco was offered nothing better than a fifth-round pick in the spring. Now, it's possible that impressive performances next week's joint workouts, maybe in the preseason, could juice that up a bit, as Mike says, Um, as could a wave of injuries to other teams' quarterbacks. And then comes the boogie. Here we go. Worst case, the 49ers could cut Lance. And he writes, yes, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but this scenario is not outside the realm of possibility. Of course. And everybody went crazy, and Mike has literally had his arms up on social media all day, blocking blows from every direction when... He's the Dikembe Mutombo of Twitter, though, so... There's literally... Fair. Do you read anything? Don't block, anything, don't block me. <laughs> exactly. Love you, Mike. <laughs> Even anything you, anything you read in here, is there an opinion in there? No. Cutting Trey Lance is the worst case scenario. Right. Best case scenario, Trey Lance is QB2. Second best, he's QB3. Third best, 
You find a team to pony up a draft pick that you're happy to trade Trey Lance for. Fourth case scenario, which would be the worst case scenario, you have to cut him because you don't feel like he can beat out Brandon Allen to be QB3. Yeah. I mean, is there anything that I said there that was no inaccurate? No. And that's all Mike Silver is saying. No, I'm just I'm I'm trying to figure out how this conversation has has gone the way that it's gone. I, that's what I, there are so many things here that that if you're a 49er fan, you can be uncomfortable with them. You can be critical if you want, starting with the pick they made. Um then people go to the play calling last year against Chicago and Seattle. I think there are healthy conversations there. Somehow this has gotten to anybody who says anything that questions even the slightest Trey Lance related to you hate him. You hate him. This is slander, and you are keeping him down. Why do people speak about him this way? I'm like, I, where is this coming from? What on earth are y'all talking about? This guy's a football player, and his football team, not that into him. Maybe. Maybe it isn't that into him. Not right now. They're definitely not. They picked him third overall, and he's battling for the two. With two guys. They're not that into him right now. He's allowed to go change that. And the, and the avenue is wide open for that. But there are so many facts here that get pushed to the side. Um, in favor of emotion. 